hi um i was listening to a podcast and they were giving advice to someone who was sounded like they were dealing with like an emotionally avoided person like they were in a friends with benefits relationship and they really liked the person the person didn't like them feel like they had to walk on eggshells yeah yeah if anyone listened to like um emotionally online's um manage aspects podcast it was like this question and she gave really good advice of just like like they talked about it for a little bit and then she gave a good advice of being like like this person's not going to change for you um like you just need to leave and move on and i think that's good advice because it's like a clear thing of like this is what you need to do but then i started just like thinking of like the fact that I got into a lot of situations that were like that when I was younger and that was the advice that people always gave me and I would try but I don't think I was ever given like a a deep enough anchor of like why like why I had to do that like why do I have to leave because there would be some there's some there would be in me this wounded unloved part of me that would just give in to like all right then I'm going to change why like why do I have to leave if like almost like I don't think I consciously thought this but my mind would have processed it as like all right I'm leaving based on something that they're going to do but there was always this just gaping hole of like this unloved part of me that I was just like that always always won it always won and I think that's normal especially if you grew up in a family where like love was something that was understood to be conditional on either your parents own emotional regulation or your like you having to dull your own emotions or learn to be what learn how to appease your parents or please your parents essentially whatever forms like an anxious attachment or an avoidant attachment i'm like fearful avoidance so I have a mixture of both but I definitely what sounds like is happening in that thing is like an anxious avoidant like duo because if you're sitting there accepting someone like accepting a relationship in which you have to continually keep an eye out for the moment where another person could leave because they're triggered by their own unresolved trauma of like whatever their shit is like if you're having to constantly shape yourself around that i don't know my brain as soon as I was on the podcast all my brain just wanted to say was like my advice would be like ask yourself what part of you is accepting that and i guess like a lot of my like i don't know i feel kind of uncomfortable when i go to give advice to people in emotional situations like this because my little earth sign <laughs> virgo thing just like it goes to immediate like responsibility like how to handle this front like this situation like with your needs with your safety in like paramount priority do you know what i mean like and I feel like sometimes people can hear like earth sign and sometimes air sign advice, but it's not always, I don't know, earth sign advice. People can hear earth sign advice and go, well, it's not that easy. Well, that's not it. Well, like there's more involved in it like that, but or like whatever it is. And it's kind of like, yeah, I get it. But like, if you're asking how to get yourself out of this, like that would probably be my starting point is like to be very real because that if you're in the realm of your emotion, if you're just following how hurt like if you are just only registering how hurt you are that to me i'm just seeing just like a sea that is just chaos like waves going everywhere and crashing and rip ties and it is a sea that is not calm and your emotions are definitely leading your perspective in that moment and that's okay like it's not that is not a fault but like that's and that's where i was in like every single one of my relationships like point blank and when someone would come with the advice of just like he's not being good to you like he's never going to change you just have to leave i'd be like i hear you and i get it but like i feel like that advice is just like though it is sensical and good it's just throwing like a little plank of wood into an ocean and then being like now get in there 
<laughs> like throwing like a little plank, like square plank of wood into an ocean and being like, now waves happen in there. Waves only take place in here. Like, I don't know, there's just something that's kind of like, I know for me and how I would feel things and me in that situation, like I'd hear that advice and I'd hear it and I'd be like, yeah, okay. But like, as I've come to understand, just as a person who would be in that situation, I really need to get out of the situation because I need to feel like I have the strength. I need to feel like I understand something in order to take action. Like, I need to ask myself why. I need to ask myself, okay, what part of me is allowing me to be fulfilled by this person who perspectively has their own issues, but to you, doesn't love you wholly, is insecure about their love, isn't emotionally available to you. You have to constantly be changing yourself in order to like keep the relationship not stable, not whole, not fulfilling you. There's a part in you that's telling you that that's okay. And sometimes it can be really hard to hear that, but it's true because you are, you're staying and there is a part of you, albeit a wounded part of you, albeit something that in childhood you probably learned that like the way to gain your parents' love or the way to gain your first love's love was to do exactly what you're doing in this relationship. Like you're in a child, I feel like I'm wording this all wrong, but like if you put it this way, when you're a kid, you're learning, you're in class and you're learning the way, and through your parents, you're learning the ways of connection and you're learning the way of building relationship and you're learning what security is to you. And if you grow up in an insecure environment, you're gonna learn that insecurity means security. So when you grow up and you're in your late teens or whenever you have your first relationship, early 20s, mid 20s, whenever it is, that's like your first exam. It's your first assignment. And so you're going to take what you learned and you're going to start to apply it in your life. And naturally, the little part of you that has understood that insecurity is security, you're going to find someone and that like there's going to be an energy that kind of is inside of you and you're going to meet somebody who on the outset, whether you like to admit it or not, probably like display the best sides and characteristics of one of your parents and you're going to get along with them <laughs> it's going to feel great and you're going to be like that little part of you is going to be like oh like yeah I, this is great and then they're going to start to like they're going to start showing whatever traits or whatever patterns that you learned in childhood were secure love which are very insecure and you're going to be in that situation and your subconscious mind is going to go back to the data then like the like instances and the, how it felt in its life and like everything that you learnt in your little learning period and you're going to apply it and you're going to go oh i've been in this situation before i know how to act i just need to suppress my emotions i just need to walk on eggshells i just need to be what this person needs me to be i just need to quiet down my emotions i just need to do this blah blah blah, blah. and you start just acting out what you've already learnt in hopes that it works out this time because in your child's like in little kid mind i know that not everyone's parents stays but <laughs> in child mind when you're growing up when you have caregivers they are supposed to be these static staying figures that give to you and so if that isn't met whatever information that was given to you just kind of assimilates into there but then there's going to be these parts of you that still yearn for stability and security but they don't really know how to get it and they're kind of at a loss because they don't have the tools to be able to get it so you're just going to kind of do whatever you can in your next situation in your new exam and your new assignment as an adult but the thing is when you're an adult you've probably grown up and you've started to understand yourself and you've probably seen relationships around you whether it be in friends or the family members or in movies tv you've had fantasies you've read books you kind of have an understanding of what you want love to be at a very like whatever level where it's basic deep fantastical ideal realistic whatever it is you kind of actually have like a little bit of a mirror now like you have something inside of you that goes oh this is what I want, this is what I'm getting, and they aren't matching up. And so then there becomes this conflict of like, ooh, ooh, ah. But then 
there's this thing inside of you, this little kid, this like thing of navigation of love that is just so strong. Like it, like, and when it is the thing that teaches you security and it teaches you that you are worthy. It teaches you what your worth essentially is. Like it teaches you like what makes you acceptable, accepted to other people, into a family, into a vulnerability, into what makes you acceptable, like almost as like a human being. And if you were shown that that love is conditional to who you are and it's not unconditional and like, if you're shown that you have to, that you are just not enough, that you as who you are are not enough, you're not going to grow up being able to give that to yourself. You're not going to grow up with anybody else telling you that. So in these situations, you're not going to believe that anything that you're feeling, anything inside of you that's telling you, this isn't good enough for me. This isn't good enough for me. This isn't good enough for me. Any of those little alarm bells in you that are going off, you're not going to, you might hear them, but there's going to be a stronger resounding alarm bell that goes, this is what I know. This is how I got love when I was little. This is how I was like, I just have to do this. No, no, no. Don't listen to that part of you that's telling you like, don't listen to anything else. What I'm saying right now is that all you need to do is dull your emotions. All you need to do is stay silent. All you need to do is go back to them. All you need to do is apologize. It's going to be this bigger alarm bell that says, this is what you've been taught. This is what you know. These are your instincts. This is what's programmed into you. Listen to this. And I'm saying this right now. It's just like some of the most convoluted shit. And I'm hoping it's all like getting across. In how I want to say it. And yeah, I don't know. There's like, there's that wounded part of you that draws you into these situations and then you find yourself there and it can hurt. It can hurt so much to realise that you're in a situation where you feel like you're not enough and you feel like you can't be yourself and you feel like the person that you want and that you love and that you need in your life so badly and so desperately doesn't feel the same about you it also doesn't value you in the way that there's deep down, deep down in everybody, you have an awareness, subconscious awareness of the fact that you deserve to be loved and that you are worth everything. And the fact that that bit, little bit of you doesn't get lit up and doesn't get attention and doesn't get to be seen hurts. And the way to get out of it, the advice that I would give to get out of it or the advice that I think like I would want myself to hear when I was younger is that like if you weren't given, if you weren't shown when you were younger, if you weren't given the tools, if you didn't grow up in stability, if you did it, like if you are at this point when you're like, holy fuck, like I'm hurting so much, what do I do? Somebody help me, somebody help me, somebody help me. The shitty thing is about being an adult is that like nobody can help you. Like, no one can help you. That's the thing about developing a sense of identity. That's the thing about developing your own path is that like, nobody can help you but you. Like, yeah, if you have a therapist, go for it. If you have supportive family, amazing, amazing, amazing. But, like, there, like, again, like, the, the wounding is just, it can override those voices. Like, at the end of the day, you're always going to make your own choices. Do you know what I mean? Like, and I, I say that for myself. Like, I had people around me telling me anything and everything and I could hear it and I was like yes but like your wounding and your pain is going to scream louder than anyone around you and so at the end of the day you're going to you're only really going to listen to yourself and that's the shittiest thing about being an adult it's also the best thing it's the thing that you can go to fucking a supermarket and you can buy whatever the fuck you want because you're an adult now <laughs> but it's also in these situations it's why it's 
the exact same reason of why that person is never going to change for you. Because no matter how much you sit in front of them and you cry and you tell them that they're hurting you or whatever you say, they are not going to change unless they realize. And it is the exact same for you. You are not going to leave that person until you realize that it is your job to get you to leave. And it is your job to go, shit, I'm hurting. What do I do about this? And naturally, your, per your thing is to go to the thing that's hurting you and go, this is your fault. You have to do something about this. You have to change. And they're just fucking, they're not going to. That's why I say that advice is valid. That person isn't going to change. But also, you're not going to feel better. You're not going to feel better until you acknowledge that you're in pain and you have to do something about it. And you're in pain and you have to understand why. How did I get myself here? Don't try... The thing that I want to like stress hectically is that like nothing here is of consequence of any fault. I try not to apply like fault in life situations because life just happens. Like life just happens. Like obviously there's like everything I'm saying right now is very general and there's like contingencies and pins and everything and outliers and whatever. But like I feel like fault especially when you apply it to yourself, it puts this really heavy burden of like blame where it can kind of just make you, in sensitive situations, it can kind of make you just feel shittier than you already are. And like, that's not the goal here. Like the goal is to get you to be safe. And the goal is to like, to feel safe within yourself. And the goal is to go, shit, I'm here. I'm here. And I'm hurting. I hear myself hurting. And yep, it's this person that's hurting me. It's okay. Like, I, I'm not saying that you then have to, this is why the fault thing is so important. Like there's like the blame stuff is so important. Like you are hurting and you are hurting as a result of this person's actions. And that is true. But the only real way that you can get yourself out of that and get yourself safe is by going, okay, there's a part of me that's allowed this. There's a part of me, like, and not like, and that can be something it's like the hardest thing for me to say because I can understand that it can be the hardest thing for you to hear is that like you've allowed this because it almost sounds as bad as like you've done this like this is your fault but it's like it's not that you have allowed this you have not consciously walked into a situation and gone I'm gonna get hurt there is a part of you that pain thing that huge alarm that big voice inside of you that you probably weren't aware of until your first assignment, your first exam, like whatever you learned, this is your first time that it's probably popping up and you had never learned to listen to it before. Or maybe you've done this a lot of times and each time it's just confusing, whatever it is. That part of you allowed this to take place because it's just trying to feel out the world. It's just trying to understand. It's just trying to search for love. And it is allowing all of that in because it's what it knows. And that's the only way that it knows how to function. And your job now that you've understand that and like you've realized that and you've gone, fuck, okay, I'm here. Your job now is to reparent that part of you. And that starts with going, all right, fuck. What part of me is keeping me here? What part of me is saying that this person loving me in this way is all I'm worth? And then you can find that part, get in touch with that part and go, all right, yep, it's the part of me that grew up with this kind of parent or in this kind of family or with this lack of this or whatever it is. And you can see that part in you and try your hardest not to reject it because that is the part of you that needs the most love is going, okay, I'm accepting this because I wasn't given... Like, I wasn't accepted as a child. I was taught that my identity was not worth anything and that I couldn't take up space. And that if I accepted those rules, then I could stay in a family. And then my mother or father or siblings would give me love. If I accepted that my identity and who I was wasn't deserving of taking up space, then I'm going to go out into the world and I'm going to find a partner that gives me that set of rules, gives me that set of boundaries, so I know what to work with. So I know that that's how I can be in a relationship, for example. That is that part of you. And you can look at that part and go, okay, fuck, didn't see this coming. I need to work on that. How do I work on that? Obviously not in this environment. So I am going to leave. Like, I feel like, 
I wish someone would have just explained this to me when I was younger because I feel like if I had a part of myself to look into and to connect with because I feel like that's sometimes the hardest part is trying to connect to yourself in moments where you're really desperately trying to connect to another person it's usually at the forsaken like usually forsakes the connection with yourself and it's like if I had just been shown or like talked through or like just given a way to connect with myself so I could anchor in on myself and go this is the part of me that I'm doing this for like this is the part of me that I'm picking like I'm not choosing to leave because they're never going to change I'm choosing to leave because this part of me is hurting and I need to help her maybe like I don't know part of me just is like maybe I would have maybe I would have been okay I don't know but like that maybe is what's getting me to make this video <laughs> that maybe is what's getting me to talk about this because maybe maybe if you're in this situation maybe this helps you maybe <laughs> maybe this just helps someone understand that like it isn't your fault and you're not flawed and you're not a failure and it's not you don't have to be angry at yourself I understand I would I completely understand if you go through this feeling and you're angry and you get angry at yourself and that's a hard pill to swallow I understand if you feel like a failure I understand if you feel any of those things and those are things to like I get it and that is normal but it's not necessarily true it's definitely not true and like I feel like the best thing you can do for yourself and the best advice that I would give in these situations is to just go through that process of loving and understanding what part of you ever thought that this was okay and telling and showing and reparenting and loving that part of you to show that it's not okay and in that process like I don't know like sometimes I don't know this is what I was saying before in the sense of like sometimes earth sign advice can be very like structured and rigid because there's so I know I've been in this situation multiple times and there are just so many large feelings that just scream at you of needing and wanting and desperation and love and fulfillment and all of these big things. And then you go through the period of a breakup, which is like, and then breaking up with somebody who's like, like toxic for you, like breaking somebody who is fulfilling like a wound within you can be one of the most confusing things ever because you like miss this person you still love this person and like you have you're grieving something that you're like trying to tell yourself was bad for you and it's like that's also like a huge hurdle is that you go through this process and you have to be like really real with yourself and you have to be really vulnerable and go fuck yeah there is a part of me that still misses that person and still loves that person even though they treated me like that and even though they were fulfilling this part of me that just wanted to repeat a broken cycle like even though all of these things are true my feelings are still true as well like and that's the thing that's the fucked up thing about fucked up relationships is that you can grieve and you can miss and you can love someone who hurt you and that's there's a big feelings to hold which is why it's all the more important to like learn and develop and become the person that holds you through those feelings because it is okay to have those feelings and it is okay for them to be present within you but it is not okay for you to be at mercy to them <sighs> yes that sounds bad like not okay it's not safe it is not safe to be at the mercy of your feelings I take it from somebody who knows like it isn't safe it's okay to have them and it's safe to feel, but it's so, 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 so important to be able to hold yourself and to be able to hold yourself in what is healthy and what is good for you and what's going to keep you safe through those feelings. And yeah, I don't know. I just, I wish, I don't know if anything would have been different. You can't change the past. Like, I can't change the past. I can't change my past. I wouldn't. But sometimes I wish I could have heard this. 
sometimes I wish I could have given my, I could have, I could go back and give myself advice. Like I wish with all of my heart that I could give, like go back and just hold my own hand from the ages of like seven <laughs> to like 19 and just guide her which is I think why I want to do this kind of stuff which is like why I'm going into counseling it's why I want to become a psychotherapist that's why I want to do all these things is because like that is what I so badly want to do for myself and maybe by doing this I can do that for somebody else and maybe if somebody if you're seeing this in the right time of your life maybe it'll help you and that would just be actually amazing <laughs> oh, that would be cool I can't explain that feeling is that altruism yeah yeah sorry if this is like really intense and very like that but I just really needed to say it and I really wanted to say it and that's like kind of ultimately what I want to do with my life is just help and just try to support or try to give support to people to be able to help themselves. That's so important. Anyway, I'm going to go maybe for a walk. It's really sunny and nice. I wish I could take my bunny for my walk. She's so cute. You're so cute. You've also pooped everywhere. Everywhere. That's okay. Okay. Bye. <laughs>